Hello and welcome back to the Winning Agenda's coverage of the 2022 Twilight Struggle League, the online Twilight Struggle League, OTSL. Uh, my name is Jesse Muleman Marshall and it's good to be back in the Twilight Struggle chair. So let's set up here, what have we got in hand? Uh, pretty good hand, pretty blue hand, which is always scary in the early war because it means our opponent's probably got a pretty red hand. Um, we can either hold that decal um, and play UN Intervention for Ops which is probably what we're going to do here, to be honest. Uh, or we can hold the UN Intervention, but I'd rather just try and hold the decal through the uh, turn three reshuffle if we can. I'm going to headline defectors here. So given there's no socialist governments, um, we've got two four ups, good for spreads. We've got Truman Doctrine, I think. We'll set up four, one, I think we only want two in Italy here. Hmm. Maybe not. So it's interesting. We get to defect as socialist government. So two in Italy is kind of safe. Um, so I think I want to go up to three around because it means then if they coup, they have to roll really well in Italy now because we can't true in if they're in if they're in Austria. So yeah, maybe we do just want to make Italy that little bit safer. But I think with this amount of influence, I don't want to lose the Middle East and North Asia access. So, uh, transport, yes, long time no see. Um, so, yeah, it's an interesting toss up. I think I do want the three Iran. And we'll see how we go. We'll headline the defectors. And away we go. So yes, it would be nice if we get to spend these two four ops trying to put some pressure on the opponent here. Yes, yeah, so they didn't lead off with anything particularly strong there. Now, so, so they might have read the defectors headline from our setup because uh, two Italy as a setup into not knowing where socialist governments is is a a bit weak. Um, and particularly if they have socialist governments in hand, they might have read that we. Um, probably had defectors there. So a three-up coup on Italy didn't roll well. So that's a very good start for us here. So we get to use this nuclear test ban, I think, to come out the gates with, um, it's interesting, we could spend some, we could spend the, uh, the ops to get straight up uh, Europe dumb uh, and still spread from Iran. Um, but, yeah, I don't, I don't know, I think I'm okay doing that actually, uh, because it does leave Iran free, but they've opened up with a three-op coup, um, and yes, this is worse for turn two if they headline De Gaulle or Suez. Um, but we do have Truman, which will help there. Uh, although we are gonna be playing Truman this turn, I suppose, because we wanna hold this decal. Yeah. It's just we are punishing them if they have the Europe scoring card this turn, which I do kind of like. Uh, and we do have enough ops that we can still, I think, go aggressively into Thailand uh, South Korea potentially, and maybe some more countries in the Middle East this turn. So I think this is okay. We know Ness is out of the deck, so we're a bit safer going one into Egypt is the other thing. Um, but I don't really want to go one into Egypt here. I'd rather go two if I was going to go at all. Um, but I think I can wait till Defcon's degraded. So I think we'll go with this. Um, yeah, so one into Egypt to Defcon two this turn is going to be great for us because we know Ness is gone. Uh, two into Egypt to Defcon three or higher. We'll see. We'll see how the turn plays out if that's something we want to do. Uh, so duck and cover coup Malaysia. Yeah, I mean, they had to roll really well there to get that off, and we still get duck and cover. So I'm not too upset about that, um, except the Asia scoring situation. So we're gonna have to rectify that pretty quickly. Thankfully, we are pretty ops rich, so um, we can either coup here for mil ops, but our coups are still bad. Uh, or we can just start 
establishing board presence. Um, I don't really want to take the uh, South Korea uh, four plus Korean War, but I also don't like leaving Korean War open to a four up, although I'm not convinced they do have any. Um, so one option is to play one into Egypt here, one into Malaysia, and one into somewhere else in Asia to deprive them of Dom. Um, but our one, that would be one into Indo Indonesia or the Philippines, which I don't love. But I do think putting one into Egypt and putting one into Malaysia, I do like because it means that we're forking them in a way because if they go ahead and take Thailand, then we get to take Libya and Egypt as well. Um, but I don't want to have them going into their next action round with Asia domination. That's, that's very important. So we could commit this whole four up to Asia here, but I think spending two ops putting one into Malaysia, it's just probably not worth it. I think we just have to probably concede that ground to them. It's a question of whether we go like to Pakistan, to South Korea here. Uh, but I think I would rather go one, two, one. Because um, I do want to take South Korea this turn, even with Korean War out there. Uh, and I know IP War is out there as well, but at the moment it's on a 5+. plus. Um, maybe we could have waited on the 1 into Egypt until, we, until DEFCON went to 2. But they've opted to place an influence here anyway. Uh, 2 Thailand, 1 Indonesia. Okay. So it does look like they have Asia scoring. Um, so we can, I mean, we can try and, this is one of those rare early war uh, US hands where it almost might be worth playing into Taiwan if we didn't have almost a resolution, um, just because we could sandbag South Korea from the war and also potentially look at a, uh, it being a battleground country, but we're never gonna event almost a resolution. We would have relied on them Eventing foremost in resolution to make that a, a decent play. So, um, we're probably going to play most of these ops into Asia off this five year plan. Um, I think we might go. I also would like to put one into Libya though. So, I'd like to get, by the end of this turn, I'd probably like to have Afghanistan. Wouldn't mind having India. I definitely want to go India because I want to spread closer here and contest these countries. Um, I probably don't need to put one in South Korea, but it's the cheapest way to get myself uh, a country other than the Philippines. And I do think I want to go into Libya. So I think I want that one in South Korea. If they have the war, they have the war and you know they get a good start. But if they don't, then I think we're in really good shape. Uh, across the board, like in the three regions, I think we're ahead. We, you know, we had a good hand, but um, I think we want to try and press that advantage as much as possible in battleground countries. I think, in general, the more yes, the the Asian battleground countries, the North Asian battleground countries particularly, um, are more vulnerable to those. Um, okay, can we be a success? We get EU, make Italy a bit safer from a socialist government's headline next turn, which is not irrelevant here as well. So that's important. Um, I think I want to play one into Burma here. Uh, one into Lebanon to give ourselves Middle East domination or one into Libya. Um, I'm happy keeping them presenceless. Uh, the thing about playing into Lebanon here is that it incentivizes them to play into uh, Lebanon as well. Uh, sorry, to play into Libya to even up the Middle East or deprive us of that domination. Um, and what else do we think they're going to do this turn? We want to try and take Lao. I think that's what our priority is one of our priorities for the next couple of action rounds. Um, 
the other one would be I don't think we need to overprotect anywhere in Europe. Uh, I don't think we need to worry about getting to Angola on turn one, uh, Angola or Algeria. So, it's just about whether we want to put the pressure on back in Lebanon or we want to keep, I think we want to keep our access in Libya because it also means that if they coup us in Egypt uh, on, on their first action around next turn, it's worth. Uh, because we do have the one influence in Libya. It just makes it that little bit more expensive for them to get battleground presence again in uh, in the Middle East, because they would have to place the two in Libya or two in Iraq. So let's see. We haven't unfortunately kept them out of Laos, and we've lost Lebanon. That's annoying. Um, so they do get presence. They've kind of done the inverse. You know, They've made it a bit more expensive for us to get uh, the domination in the Middle East, which is okay. I think we're happy to take Burma here uh, to block them off there. With this action round, just also helping with country count a little bit. We could have tried to take India in the next two action rounds, but I'm not, not convinced that that was the way to go. Uh, without having Burma as well, just because the investment of like two action rounds into India and then getting ward, even though it's five plus, I'm not so keen on. Okay, so they did have another two up, which is unfortunate, uh, but at least we've got the influence in Libya. So now do we spread from Panama or do we try keeping focus on Asia? So the chance that they didn't have the Asia scoring card, which is, in, pardon me, which is interesting. Um, So do we commit another one to Asia to, uh, I don't think that gets us huge amounts. I think next turn, if we get a three up, we can you know take Afghanistan and India and that puts us in a, a decent spot there. I do think that we wanna be spreading with this point. So it could either be Jordan, which gives us an easier path to domination next turn or Egypt, which you know similarly I think I prefer Jordan because it gets us that action around closer to Saudi Arabia and to Iraq to contest those. So let's go with that. All right. So we know decals out of the way, but D style is still in there. We've got Suez Crisis. We've got Vietnam. So a headline IP war uh, or a headline Korean war or a headline D style all would make this headline in this Asia scoring bad. So I'm not super keen on that. Um, I think it's just headline captured Nazi scientist. It could also be headline special relationship um, just in case they have De Gaulle, but I think I prefer just take the VPs off the CNS and keep the two. So they're going to fail this war, of course, which is good. Um, yep. <laughs> anytime, uh, anytime you're playing to South Korea on turn one, you're just like, oh, come on. Uh, yes, well. Glad that worked out. That's that's definitely put a smile on my face. Especially with this Asia scoring card in hand on turn two. CIA created, okay. We've got containment, D style blockade. All right, so we'll hold this Suez crisis till our last AR, and then we'll space that. Um, yeah, which is kind of annoying because it means we're gonna have to play Vietnam revolts earlier. Oh, I guess we can space the Vietnam revolts too. That's not a big deal. Um, it's not a big deal unless we fail that space, actually. That's pretty bad. So maybe, I think we're probably just happy to give them Vietnam Revolts, actually, on AR5. Um, okay, IP War's interesting in their hand. So that means that we probably wouldn't mind spending some of these US-Japan Pact points on um, showing up India and Afghanistan here. We're not gonna get mill ops again, so that's just something to keep in mind, uh, and we might get Marshall Plan, um, and we'll likely get Containment on our last AR, which also, it's kind of annoying, it makes spacing Suez worse, but it is what it is. So, the use for this operation, um, I mean, I guess we can coup Libya here with this to get a mill up uh, and degrade DEFCON, but it's a part of me that's like, would I rather just have, I don't know, we have spam in the Twitch chat. 
to ignore that. Um, there's a part of me that's like, I would rather have the influence in Egypt than the low chance coup on Libya, even if it deprives them of a coup. So how much of a difference will that victory point and them not having a coup make? I think it, it might protect Panama and maybe Egypt. So I think it's okay here. Yeah, let's do this. Yeah, so it's interesting. We're like trading a, an op. Yeah, maybe, maybe it is correct to just play into Egypt there to shore that up because they might have Middle East scoring. Uh, although I'm probably going to want to play Asia scoring. Maybe I don't want to play Asia scoring here, actually. Maybe I'd rather just get the... Uh, if I'm going to go into Afghanistan in a year, I'd rather just get those points anyway. Um, so that's kind of annoying, but... No, that point's actually really annoying. Because it means we have to overprotect Pakistan as well from the China card. Um, so I think we, we know they've got the war. I think we're happy to just give them six pluses on both if they want to take the war. Uh, so it's one, two, three. And then I think if we put the fourth in Egypt, then we're good. If they do hit the six plus though, it's pretty bad for us. Um, so like there's an argument, okay, maybe we just pop the Asia scoring card here. But in the long game, I much prefer, look, give them the one in six. If they b both decide to take the one in six this action round, and succeed then like it's really bad for us and it's a much worse outcome but i would rather play for the outcome which is that we get to hold on to pakistan so uh, as in they don't get to take it with the china card which would also put us in a bad situation i think it, or, or worse situation in the longer term in terms of getting asia back so i think we go with this and then we try and go like jordan and something else next ar after we play the scoring card so let's just start off with that Try and get the scoring card out for one BP if we can. Nice to know about the blockade. Always a good thing to be aware of. Although, you know, always annoying that they have D-style. The EU did help a little bit because it makes it a bit more expensive for them to destale, but they did get that really good role in Malaysia, which gave them a essentially a free op in Malaysia that they can take out and put somewhere else. Yeah, so it's probably going to be Malaysia, Syria, Finland, and Afghanistan. Okay. Yeah, I mean, they forced us to use up our uh, extra op overprotecting Pakistan, and then they're happy to just ship on out of there. So I think we just take this one from Asia scoring and then we try and press the advantage in the in the Middle East as well, if we can. So two ups, one into Jordan. Uh, you know, they might give us Marshall plan here, we'll see. They Now that they've played the D-style, I imagine they probably want to play the Marshall plan just to spread um, sometime in the rest of the turn because they don't have heaps of other ops. Uh, so they went one Saudi Arabia, one Zia. Okay, so we're going to need to be careful of... Oops, uh, going to be careful of Africa as we come into the mid-war. But, uh, so now that Asia's scored, I think we can turn our attention to Algeria. We know that we've got no de Gaulle coming for the rest of this turn. We can go one into Colombia this action round, and one into Jordan gives us domination, because uh, I don't think we're under pressure to go into Algeria at this point. So let's put some pressure on their Marshall Plan play, try and force them to make it earlier, which gives us the ops in, in Europe. Um, or they coup Colombia and give us an opportunity to counter coup. So I think we'll go Olympic Games, one into uh, Jordan to give us that domination position and one into Colombia to give us that access. Uh, and then we want to try and use one of these remaining two ups to take Algeria before the end of the turn uh, and one of them to hopefully do something funky around here in South America if we can. All right, so we do get the play of Marshall Plan. 
and they've evened up the Middle East. Now, yeah, I don't think we're going to go ahead and take Israel here, just because it's too expensive. But um, anytime we get a Marshall Plan for free is nice. So let's go one, two, short up Europe, and they've covered off Venezuela. So we can go Ecuador, Peru, Chile as well at some point. Um, I kind of wouldn't mind parking one in Ecuador here just to try and get some advantage or just try and uh, prevent them from kicking us out of South America um, by coup in Colombia. Uh, the other option is to spend two ops parking one in Venezuela, which is not bad because it puts a bit of pressure on their hands. So like, what have they got left uh, from this CIA created? Play blockade. They've played. Oh, sorry, they played D style. They played Marshall Plan. Um, they played Arab Israeli War. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, so they have Indo Pakistani War Containment and Blockade. So yeah, I think we are going to get them playing either Blockade or Indo Pakistani War here, and then playing Containment here. Um. So we can't play that. Suez Crisis yet because we have to hold it for blockade. Do we want to put both our influence here, try and incentivize them to play the containment next turn? Doesn't it really matter because they can just go one Brazil. Oh no, they ha they do kind of have to play two influence next turn. So they just go Indo Pakistani War, Venezuela, Brazil, hold blockade. Hmm. It does mean we have a, an influence kind of parked in South America, but it's pretty expensive. We are going to spend the other two drop. Uh, uh, two ops card, I should say, taking Algeria. So let me just do that here. I don't think they're. I don't think they're going to coup. If they coup here with blockade, like it's kind of annoying. But um, like if they coup Colombia, that is because taking Algeria is kind of a bit of a defensive play for us here. So yeah, if they coup Colombia with blockade, that's a bit annoying. But we'll make it do. And I'm just going to try and get rid of this thing in the Twitch chat. I need to moderate your own Twitch chat. God, that's annoying. It's got like options to reply and pin, but you can't like delete the message. That's super annoying. Anyway, I'm just going to hide the Twitch chat for now because that's irritating me. Ah, hey, grateful. Uh, well, you can you can make a few chats that'll uh, fill up the Twitch chat and get rid of this spam bot for me. That'd be nice. Um, so influence from blockade goes into Brazil. So that makes our uh, two-up play into Colombia. Ah, oh, you can spare. Fantastic. You're just the person I wanted. Um, two-ups play into Colombia a little bit worse. Uh, still, so now they've played blockade, we can actually play this Suez Crisis first, which is nice. Because uh, it means we can space Suez Crisis first and then play Vietnam Revolt's last IR just to make sure they don't get that extra um, action round of playing with Vietnam. Although, yeah, that's unlikely to happen. So let's just double check again what they've got. So they've got um, Indo-Pakistani War and Containment left. So they're probably going to Containment, which means we probably want to be playing Ops on our last IR yet. Yeah. So I think spacing Suez Crisis here is the way to go. So we succeed, which is nice. And now we can play Vietnam. Ah, this is fantastic spam. Getting rid of that spam fantastically well. Uh, so we can now play Vietnam for the Ops and we get three Ops. And it doesn't really hurt us too much, which is great. Uh, so we could even take Israel here to even up Middle East, so I don't mind that. So we can use that extra op from containment, go Israel, even up the Middle East. We've got pretty good posture. I mean, yeah, we may want to take Syria um, next turn just to even ourselves up on the war. Although they, I mean, yeah, the war's going back in the reshuffle. NASA's back in the reshuffle. We got De Gaulle, we held decol. Uh, the spam is gone. Thank you, Grateful. And uh, we do not want to headline this Europe scoring, but we got Red Scare, which is nice. Uh, so we've got both the France attack cards. They've got socialist governments. Um, they have got... I think that's probably the only red card that's important that we know that they've got here. They've got Warsaw Pact. But we're not so fussed about that. I don't think Warsaw Pact's been played. Just let me check they didn't play it. Oh, they did play it on turn one. So, yeah, they've just got... And they've played... 
Korean War. Yeah, okay. So we know that we're probably going to see a socialist government's headline here, but socialist government seeing into our Marshall Plan Europe is not super strong, particularly since they don't have Italy adjacency. So they may not. Uh, either way, I still think Purge uh, or Red Scare is the way to go. Uh, we've got the no red influence. Yeah, I think if we if we red scare, it means that we're pretty likely to be able to score this Europe Dom, which is nice. Uh, puts us on, you know, seven VPs going to the mid war. Um, they've got a coup on Egypt or Panama, which is decent, uh, but I think taking one off their coup is good. Um, and they've given us a, a VP in the headline phase, which is also nice from Asia scoring. So, like, Asia. Kind of got away with it in a way because we've got the three riskiest um, battleground countries, uh, and obviously them failing the Europe, the, the uh, Korean War was massive. So Ku and Panama, it's one less than normal uh, because of Red Scare, but they still succeed. That's okay. Uh, so do we want to pull the uh, trigger on Europe scoring? I think we want to not. I think we want to try and get one into Panama here. Uh, we probably want to threaten their. Uh, Nigeria, uh, and I think I want to think about whether we want to do something else in South America here as well. I don't think we want to play the four up yet. Uh, so we could go one up into Panama with Olympic Games, and we haven't got a heap of good plays in the Middle East, unfortunately. Until we lose Egypt, I don't, I'm not going to go into Syria. Um, yeah, I'm just worried about this Colombia, basically. I think that's our most, most urgent issue. It's just about whether we want to try and create a problem for them. I think moving into adjacent to Nigeria is okay, but it's a lot of ops to, to flip Nigeria at this point. But I think just being in Saharan states is probably a good place to be. Um, yeah, it's just, is Panama enough, or do we want to go to Ecuador? No, I don't think I'm too fussed about that. So let's go Panama... And, uh, no, I think I actually do want to make my way around to Chile this turn just to put some pressure on their hand while they're purged. Yeah, I think that's that's the correct thing to do because we can then next action round use any spare influence to move into Peru and then we've got adjacency to a new battleground that we didn't previously have adjacency to, so which is a pretty big thing uh, when they're purged for them to have that pressure on their hand to have to defend Chile and Argentina. So let's go with that. Uh, they might have redrawn blockades, so we definitely want to keep one of these until the end of the turn. So pretty fortunate draws for us so far, I think, here. Socialist govs as a two-op is okay. I'm not so fussed about them having Panama because... Uh, maybe, maybe it was correct, actually. No, I don't think it was correct to play through into Panama there. Uh, Peru, just to get that adjacency. And then... Maybe one into Mexico. Yeah, I mean, I, the other thing we could have fought for is to try and go, like, Japan. But I just think taking Japan as the US is just so pointless. Even, like, say I hadn't had Asia scoring. It was not really much worth spending much time talking about that. But, yeah, that was another option. Um, the other option is that we can go... No, I think we want to save our four up to try and fight in these South American battlegrounds rather than trying to jam in Nigeria. Um... Do we want to start playing into Mexico here? I think we do. Just get that happening. Yep. Because we don't want to just randomly give them free ups there. All right, China card influence. Okay, I mean, that's pretty good. We got a play of the China card for four uh, ops. Oh, sorry, for three ops. Um, going to the mid-war. I don't mind that at all. Uh, so I can finish off Argentina with one. So playing ops into Chile here is not amazing. So I think we'll just give up on our little South American jaunt for the moment. I think we'll score Europe. The other option is we can start jamming in Eastern Europe, but they could have Warsaw Pact again, and we don't have Truman anyway to back it up, so... Let's just take the five VPs and 
move on. So South America and Africa are weak points for us. Southeast Asia is a weak point for us. Middle East, we got away with even, which is pretty good. We've just had like a big op surplus and this uh, Red Scare Purge has helped us a lot. So let's start spacing now. We'll space the decal. Failed on that. So then I think we'll space Suez Crisis since we're overprotected in France. We might be willing to just play De Gaulle to give them one there. Yeah, South America control is kind of annoying that only thing, yeah, like it's going to be super annoying if they draw it on turn four. The only thing we can really do um, is jam into Chile on AR7, which I'm not too upset about. It's pretty easy for them to fix, but it's like, um, it's pretty easy to fix, but obviously start of the turn is crunch time for them in terms of ARs and coups. So anyway, I think we'll go ahead and space Suez here now. Hit the BPs, which is nice. Unfortunate for us that after taking Europe on turn one, Europe dumb on turn one, we only got one early war score of Europe. That's probably the unluckiest thing for us that's come out of the cards in this early war period. But we've been very lucky with the four ops. Okay, overprotecting Thailand now that we've got the China card. That's one of the good things about getting that. Uh, we can play De Gaulle, I think, here. And then just one, two. Truman's still out there, so we've got we get a free op from this, which is good. Uh, I think we want to go Mexico. I think that's the place to be. We've got the China card, so we're not worried about like overprotecting Argentina or anything. Uh, we've got the adjacency to Nigeria to jam there. So yeah, I think we just take Mexico, get that presence, and hold the test ban over. All right, so we got South America scoring. That's interesting. Uh, Panama Canal returned, helps and doesn't help. Uh, Cuban Missile Crisis, I don't think is our friend here. I mean, it, yes, they can coup Mexico. Um, but... Hmm. Yeah, I think Panama Canal is just a better play. The other option is to put DEFCON up to four so that we definitely get a coup uh, with how I learned, but I think we can do that later in the turn, possibly, depending on how things go. And the thing about Panama Canal is that they still get to coup and we have to like jam into Brazil. And even though we have a lot of ops, it's a really ops inefficient way to do it. So in some ways playing how I learned I'm putting DEFCON up means they have to coup their, they don't have the China card, so they'd be, the, the best Asia coup they get is cooing Pakistan. Um, they get the option to coup anyway otherwise. So yeah, I actually don't mind how I land here to give us a guaranteed four up coup on Brazil, <clears throat> which we can then use to potentially realign Venezuela. So that's what I'm going to go with, I think. <clears throat> Shay's been annoying because we lose Colombia and Saharan states. So bad roll for them there, bad roll for them there. Hmm. I guess at least that's good. Um, so we want to put to four and commit to that. Yeah, so we've now lost presence, but thankfully we uh, went into Peru and Ecuador so we can still get our presence back. Um, that's one of the other advantages to going that way in South America. Early on. We can also play and realign with Fidel this turn, or we can send, send Fidel to space and then, you know, they're not, then we could potentially take Cuba and try and get a, a domination in Central America in the middle, in the mid-war, depending on whether we end up drawing it. Uh, Hunter's annoying. It's definitely annoying. That's a pretty perfect response to our play. Uh, although that coup not removing us means we can just go into Guatemala later. Uh, so I'm pretty sure we take the coup here. 
on Brazil. Even though it means that they can go to Mexico. I mean, if they have three of they get to go to Mexico, one Guatemala, but we just coup Guatemala, so I'm not too worried about that. Uh, we might end up in a coup war for Guatemala this turn. Uh, but I do. I want to play NASA anyway, because uh, Middle East has been scored, and, and so that's coming. So I'm happy to coup back with NASA. Potentially coup back with Portuguese Empire crumbles as well, but we'll see. Uh, but yeah, I think this is important enough that we just go for this and reward well, which is... Very good. So that's worth quite a few VPs. They can't call us back here, and we've got pretty strong ops in this hand. So it's going to be pretty hard for them to jam us out. So they just take Mexico. We can race them for countries here in South America so that they can't have domination by taking Uruguay... Peru and Ecuador, uh, but that opens us up to realigns if they coup Uruguay successfully. I'm not too worried about them cooing Uruguay successfully, I don't think, because I think that the power of that play in terms of the VPs that we're going to deny them is pretty strong. Um, it's going to it's worth three VPs if they if they don't kick us out of one of those countries next IR or take Paraguay themselves, but then we can take Bolivia and then it's it's even Stevens again, and they've got the weaker country in in Colombia. So that's one way we can go about that. The other thing, obviously, to be mindful of is the getting the one into Guatemala, but I think they're under pressure not to do that this AR anyway. Uh, so let's do this. Try and even up this South America scoring. Obviously, we're not looking in the greatest shape in Africa at this point, but we can only, only deal with one crisis at a time. <laughs> Even though, again, you know, holding obviously holding the um, nuclear test ban over to this turn gave us that bit of additional flexibility, which is much nicer coming into this turn and into the mid-war and everything being opened up, rather than having that de Gaulle sitting in our hand, combining with Fidel and Portuguese Empire crumbles to give us something annoying. Uh, so they get Cuban Missile Crisis, which is pretty bad, actually. Um, I mean, it's not great for them, but... Yeah, in terms of they don't get any ops out of it. Um, but it's also not great for us because it means we can't coup in Guatemala or in Saharan states this turn, which I'm a little bit miffed about. Um, so are we allowed to actually play... Oh yeah, we give them this. Are we allowed to play South America scoring? I can't remember the rules on this land B with scoring cards. And must use this card for operation during the next action round. Um, I seem to remember something about scoring cards being a, an exemption to that, but obviously not, okay. Um, place influence. Uh, da, da, da. So if we go into Guatemala, then they kind of have to spend an AR coup in Guatemala, so that's not so bad. Uh, we can also put one into Paraguay to make it harder for them. But we're running out of playable ops at that point, so it's kind of like if they start jamming in Brazil, it becomes more of a problem for us. Hmm. They don't know that the scoring card's coming this turn. So we can do this to get presents and then go here because I still think we can respond with Portuguese Empire Crumbles if they go into Paraguay. The only problem for us here is going to be if they coup, but that's always been a coup, uh, a problem for us. Um, and we've made the aggressive play into Guatemala to make it less likely that they're just going to go ahead and coup Uruguay or something. Because again, they don't know that we've got the scoring card. So they might be more concerned in an immediate sense about us realigning in Mexico. So as expected, they coup Guatemala. Okay, so we've got to... Thankfully, they rolled poorly again. So we have to fight another day there because we don't have the ability to coup because of CMC. Well, I mean, we can, but we don't really want to take ops out of uh, Europe. So a couple of good ARs for them evens things up, but uh, that's okay. That's okay. We will, uh, we will not play Fidel this turn. I think we're almost certainly sending Fidel to space now, given the situation in Central America is a bit dicey. Um, 
Do we want to do anything? I don't think we want to do anything in Africa. I think that's coup time there next turn. For us, we can play Panama Canal returned actually here. That's actually, that's going to be a good AR7 play for us to, to um, fork them on the coup. So we've got three plays left. It's going to be Space Fidel, play NASA. And it's annoying because we want to play NASA for a coup because that's the best way to use one up cards. It's the highest efficiency, but we just simply can't coup this turn because of Cuban Missile Crisis. So what's the best option for one up? I don't think there really is one this AR for us. Can't coup. It would be so nice to coup. It, yeah, it's it's kind of annoying that they took out that they used our CMC against us there because we've got so many good one up coup targets. But what can you do? I think let's just space here and, and hold some flexibility for later in the turn. So we can see the headline. That's nice. Um, it does mean we can't space Portuguese Empire crumbles, but I'm not too fussed about that. Do have to hurry up on the clock a little bit here now actually that i just realized i'm playing 60 minutes um so we've got our man in two round for space okay so we'll play ar6 and uh, we'll just play this nasa i think and uh maybe place one in cuba actually Cuba or don't think Tunisia matters. Maybe South Africa. Let's just go South Africa. It's going to be possibly more important to be in a better position there than in Cuba to press ahead and take it early next turn because we're going to play these Panama Canal returns here now. So I think they're going to overprotect Panama, but they are going to put three in South Africa. Interesting. We'll play this. It's a good AR7 for us. Because picking up Panama here would be nice. We'll go for that. All right. So we get puppets, but it's a bit late. Uh, not 100% late, but it is a bit late. Uh, Camp David Accords is going to be nice. Um, headline Migration Theology. Ooh. Don't like that. That's really annoying. So we can headline puppet governments, go one Cameroon, one Botswana, one Cuba. Uh, we might prefer to go Afghanistan, but I don't think so. I think we're going to headline puppets in response to liberation theology. Yeah, really annoying that they had it, but it is what it is. Uh, any wars in hand? Play this flower power. No, so we're pretty happy to play that. Again, we've got lots of lots of ops in hand, but this Muslim revolution is pretty much unplayable. Um, so one, two. I mean, I don't actually think Afghanistan is that important to us here, is it? Any series important? Botswana is likely to be important. And so is presence in Central America. So, yeah, I think maybe let's go there. Uh, actually, Haiti's better. So, public governments, sorry. Uh, one in Cuba, one in Haiti, one in Cameroon. Yeah, so now they're going to go maybe one Panama, two Cuba. Maybe one Panama, one Cuba, one Nicaragua. Um, either way, we're going to be wanting to coup a bit in Central America to try and even this up and then realign. Um, and we also potentially want to try and jam somewhere in Asia. Uh, sorry, in Africa. So we've got adjacency to both Angola and Zaire. So we are, we are kind of stretching their ops a bit here, but they're also stretching our ops. So it's it, much of a muchness. Brazil thankfully didn't roll super well uh, we only get one VP from Alliance for Progress uh, but we can now go ahead and take Cuba and uh, put one in no 
No, I think we're just going to take you up. Yeah, we're going to save the other ops for potentially overprotecting one of the African battlegrounds. Uh, they could go three up here, Nigeria, Zaire, Angola. They could go Ku Cameroon. Um, but if they go Ku Cameroon, I think we're okay. Uh, take back China card. Okay. I think we're all right with that. Um, so I think we'll just use Flower Power to place one, two, uh, three, four. Yeah, in Zaya. <clears throat> That's fine. So Ku in Colombia and Ku in Guatemala are both really good for us this turn, if we can pull them off. They can't really Ku Cameroon this AR because then we get to do the same thing in Angola that we just did in Zaya. But if they do Cameroon, do Ku Cameroon, then they're obviously threatening the realign on Zaya. <clears throat> so we need to be a bit careful of that. But they go influence in South Africa. Okay. So we will, I think, just take Nigeria here. The other, the other option, uh, the problem is we have to play Portuguese Empire this turn. So we're kind of running out of good plays. Um, we've also got South African unrest. So I think we will focus on the other parts of Africa here. We'll probably use both of those for coups. Uh, so we'll just go one, two, three, four in Nigeria. Take the domination. And then we'll use Portuguese Empire and South African Unrest for coups and we'll events Camp David Accords. Um, and Space Muslim Revolution, hold over Latin American Death Squads to next turn. Okay. Good Cameroon. So now we're going to uh, attempt coup in. They're going to get Botswana here. Annoying. They're going to shore up Angola, but. We're going to get some no ops, which seems nice. Ugh. One is definitely what we didn't want to roll there. They have rolled a one or a two on almost every coup they've done, so we can't really complain. Zero of a skirmish, interesting, okay. So that's pretty annoying. Um, yeah, probably should have gone into Zimbabwe there, actually. Didn't think of that. Well, I mean, I did think of it. I said it earlier in the turn, but then I forgot about it. Uh, so we got the China card back. Um, yes, Mr. Verbal, that's right. Complaining. Something that we do very, very well. Um, so now I think we'll coup. Africa domination. We can't really undo it at this point, particularly since... All the Africa access cards are in our hand, uh, all their Africa cards. Um, so we'll roll the dice here, roll well, and then we'll just threaten that Mexico realign. Unfortunately, Africa not looking ideal. I mean, the one saving grace of rolling a one on Saharan states there was that it makes it more difficult for them to surround us in Nigeria again. Uh, it also still like makes it hard for them to get Algeria. Oh, they've got Algeria adjacency through France, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, okay. Uh, so the issue here is I, we can just hold Camp David Accords over for next turn. That's no big deal. Uh, we'll over, do we have protect France here? I think we do rather than go the one Canada cause no rads in the back in the deck. Uh, so I am actually going to go realignments on Mexico. Great. That worked, that worked out well. We won one of our little battles this turn and lost the other one. We're going to space Muslim Revolution our AR7, which is not a great AR7 play, but um, I think we've accomplished a few good things this turn. They're spacing as well for their AR7. There goes grain sales, and we'll space this. Fail. Okay. Wouldn't have minded those VPs. Uh, so now Central America scoring comes out, which is good. Lone Gunman, very annoying, but at least we've got Arsenal and the China card. Um, OAS founded could be helpful. This is a very strong hand. Wow. Okay. Um, so we've got Voice of America, we've got Ask Not. I think we just want to Ask Not and get rid of those two and see where our hand ends up. After that, I think that's what we've got to do here. So we'll do that. We could do Voice of America, 
um, to make it hard for them to coo. What are, our, what are our Voice of America targets? Yeah, it would have been better if we hadn't fought them in Africa and then we drawn Voice of America this turn and we could have kind of wiped them out while their influence in Africa was low. But yeah, whatever, we did well in Central America. Uh, okay, Ooh, a four plus brush warrant. Italy's a bit dicey. Ooh. Not super keen on that. Uh, is there anything that we can do about that in the headline phase? Not really. Uh, yeah, probably could have put one in just Portugal earlier on to try and deal with that. I mean, I think the best thing we can do is try and put some pressure on them in the headline phase rather than doing this ask not. Something like... Um, OAS founded or one in Argentina, one in Venezuela. We don't really have the ops to follow that up though. So I think I'm just going to do this last night. Like you've got Lone Garmin in hand. You just got to take the beat, I think. Uh, we'll just discard one, two. And I think we're happy to just have the one small step. That was decent draws. So yeah, I imagine they probably go after Italy. They might go after Nigeria if they have Africa scoring in hand. That's always an option. Uh, but they, they have the option to coup Nigeria, so I imagine they'll probably just go after Italy here. Possibly Pakistan. Yeah, they can't really go after Mexico, I don't think, here. Do have to try and play this turn a bit more quickly because of the clock. So what's our... Mm, oh, I hate losing Italy to brush war. <laughs> really irritates me. Maybe I should play NATO more. No, no, no. You can never play NATO as the US player. Um, so a good coup on Nigeria is unfortunate. So I think we don't... It's pretty hard for us to get back into Africa, to be honest here. Um, it's the only unscored region, but the rail lines threats are so bad if we just ABM one of those countries. Um, that, what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? So the one option we have is nuclear subs and hope they don't have the scoring card this turn. Um, or we just go, actually we can go for Central America control. I think that might be better here. That the other time. Hmm. Yeah, I think we've just got to fight them in the Americas. So let's play this. Uh, we'll coup here. We've got that scoring card. We've got control. It's a good roll. Can't complain. A five for a five. And then they get Africa scoring. Fair enough. Six points, we'll take our seven points. And then we can end the turn with either OAS Founded or Voice of America, which I think is better. So we've got uh, five more plays. One, two, three, four, five. We get to hold one of them for the headline phase. Might hold salt negotiations, although I don't really want to salt. In some ways, salting is advantageous to us because we have more good coup targets, but then again, the Africa targets aren't that good, so it's really just Argentina. Uh, and Mexico is not a great target for them. Algeria is pretty good. Yeah, I still think on balance we probably have more good coup targets. But we kind of have to coup Zaire and Angola at once, so maybe I'm not convinced on that. We just play this for ops, I think. Uh, we might... Yeah, so I think we can disrupt, we can do OAS Founded and Voice of America as like um, uh, AR7 headline combo. So maybe we just play Camp David Accords for the event next AR. We kind of want to make some more inroads in South America kind of want to make some info uh, inroads in Asia. If we've got some spare ops, I think it's turn six getting to the point where putting a couple in Afghanistan, putting some in Taiwan since we still haven't played the China card um, might be good. Or we can start rustling their jimmies in uh, 
Malaysia and Thailand, but I think I'd rather focus on the countries that are still open. So it'd be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah. So we can still get Asia domination, particularly with Formosa and active, if we just start filling up the rest of Asia now. So that might be, I think that's probably the most advantageous place to start placing ops this turn now that the whole of the board is scored. Uh, they're probably thinking a similar thing, I'd imagine. So I'm actually probably going to go uh, to Afghanistan, one, Taiwan here, I think. With this salt negotiations. We do have to be very careful of that Algeria um, in terms of they're probably going to get the coup next turn, particularly if we do this headline AR1 combo. But I guess we're putting a heap of pressure on South America with that combo, so that's not too bad. What are the other options for our Voice of America? I mean, there's North Korea... That's probably about it. Libya's not really worth it. Iraq's not really worth it. Egypt, we're going to get from Sadat anyway. So I think it's, yeah, it's probably just two out of Argentina, two out of Venezuela. If we can pick up Argentina that way, because we'll go one ahead in both countries with OAS as well. Uh, if we can go one ahead, sorry, if we can pick up one of those countries, we, uh, particularly Argentina, then we'll have the good rail lines on Chile, which is also nice. It is getting a little bit late at night here in Australia, where our, our opponent wanted to... Uh, oh, it looks like they've disconnected. That's not ideal. Um, hopefully we haven't disconnected. You guys still seeing the stream? Hopefully I'm still online. It'd be really unfortunate if my uh, clock was ticking down and I wasn't connected anymore. Um, yeah, our opponent wanted to start at 10pm um, our time, which they originally wanted to start at 11pm our time. And I said, that's a bit late for my brain to function can we do a couple of hours earlier? And they said, can you do 10 p.m.? And I was like, oh. But yeah, it's now an hour into the game and it's 11 p.m. and my brain is not at 100% functional capacity. So that is not ideal. Um, yeah, if uh, if someone who's watching the stream could uh, let me know whether it's alive, that would be good. Oh, it looks like our opponent has reconnected. That's a good sign. It's a good sign for us still having been connected this whole time. And I think Playdeck does tell you if you're disconnected it, sh it um, shifts you out of the window so yeah hopefully our clock is not surreptitiously running down behind the scenes somewhere all right so three four five so seven ar7 is oas founded headline voice of america so yeah six five four three pretty happy with that bear trap okay and the bear trapping themselves that's interesting so we get two ARs in a row here, at least. So that kind of actually makes me want to pull the trigger on this and go one, two, three, four. Because uh, at the very least, we get to salt negotiations, take Argentina. So we'll pull that plan forward a little bit. Could have gone aggressive in Africa instead, but I'm, I'm happier taking this opportunity to take South America instead. I think it's more important and harder to shift later in the game. We can still disrupt Venezuela later, so uh, I'm not too upset about that. And we're still, by doing this, giving ourselves the, the Chile realign option as well with this one small step, which is nice. And we've now got OAS founded into nuclear subs as an option, uh, the headline combo, so all is not lost uh, in terms of that. So they had a not ideal hand. Uh, but they get there in a way. Uh, so now we get to try the rear line on Chile if we're keen, uh, or we can coup Colombia first uh, and then do rear line on Chile like with nuclear subs. I kind of like that, to be honest. Um, although it is a bit greedy because it means that like we're presuming we're going to roll well on the first rear line and then um, have the second one left to do something good with. So maybe we just save the action route and the ops to go rail in Chile now. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. If we get Chile, we're happy. Yeah, so second one, come on. 
There we go. Whew. All right. Ooh, are we going to play the China card here? Mm, I don't think so. I think that's a bit greedy. Like, they've indicated to us that their hand is not ideal by bear trapping themselves and then playing Summit. They might have a three up here, but they also might not. Let's see. We've got like four minutes of turn, so we are actually going to have to really hide this up. Okay, we will bury. They do have a three up indeed. All right. So back into Chile. Oh, jamming us in Argentina. Okay, interesting. Uh, so we'll go place one, two. Go ahead in Argentina. See what they've got. And then we probably will actually just OAS found it here. Might. Uh, yeah, that's pretty rude. Okay. Uh, so we cannot discard, so we will lose that. Uh, and then we'll go, we'll just place the one. I think that's okay. It's not the, it's not the worst blockade that you can ever run into, but it is, it was a little bit annoying. Um, brush war, interesting. Hmm. So we've got Sadat, which is a bit annoying. We'd rather they draw that. Um, we've got double play up the China card if we want it, especially since Cultural Revolution's out of the deck, but it does mean we lose Formosan. Ooh, Brezhnev Doctrine. Okay, we've got to be careful here. Um, how can we put max pressure on this turn? I think it's probably... They're, they're probably going to get... Like, they're going to threaten us here in West Germany, which is a big deal. Um, even with us being able to play the China card there for free. I don't think there's anything else in our hand that's going to let us fight in Europe effectively. So let's just threaten Venezuela in the headline. With this. One, two. Now if they want to coup Venezuela. Uh, or Algeria or whatever. Uh, we get to repair West Germany which is good. And we probably still here end up with South America domination, which is nice. And then we've still got the brush war to try and take control. I think if we can hold South America control for the rest of the game, we should hopefully be okay. But we do need to start paying a bit more attention to Asia again, which having a double play of the China card is going to be helpful to do. Um, okay, so they went there. Take Venezuela back and the jam and the duck and cover. All right. Uh, Oh, how are we going to play this? They must have Truman in hand if they're willing to do that. Um, I don't think we want to ops race them. I think we just let them have the Europe domination. We go... One, two... Uh, three... Yep, so we're going to space, Quagmire space, OPEC for this. Oh, we can't space both. We're going to have to maybe hold one. Playing OPEC when they have Venezuela is a bit annoying. So maybe we coo. We're definitely not cooing with this. Um, still not sure if I want to play the China card here or just take the two VPs from Nixon. We'll see what they have. they got a lot of ops, so it's a bit annoying. Um... We're coming into late war though, so we do have options in terms of how we deal with Europe, hopefully. Do we want to coup and then brush war in Venezuela? Or do we just want to like brush war Libya? Just play Sadat and then brush war Libya. I don't mind playing Sadat, brush war Libya, but Venezuela is a pretty big prize. It's just do we have the space to coup this turn? I don't know. I kind of want to do this sooner rather than later because I want to take the arms race VPs, I think. But if I take the arms race VPs, then I'm probably not getting Formosan off. I think Formosan, worry about Formosan is probably unnecessary. But it is a lot of VPs if I like go just brush war Libya here, arms race Nixon, like that's a, that's 
uh, if the brush was successful, uh, that's like six VPs. That's pretty decent for a turn without having played a scoring card. But it's three hours and eight ops as well. And it obviously depends on what they do in the meantime. And we get to flip Livia out of it, which flips the region in concert with Sadat as well. And gives us domination. Yeah, so I actually think um, the brush for on Livia here is not too bad. Oh, okay. So you're using Truman to fill that up. Fair enough. That was, they did have Truman. That's why they went for the ploy. Works out well for them. Yeah, so let's go ahead and brush for Libya. Oh, it gives them two VPs. Uh, that makes it a lot less good. Uh, but we have to play the brush for this turn anyway. And we're off to... Uh, yeah, that would have been nice to get off. It's unfortunate. Still get Sadat, so we get to even up the region. Probably could have done Sadat first, I suppose. We do still have a few VPs here for the rest of the turn. I think I want to do sit out first before anything else, although Afghanistan is worth a VP. Ooh, coming with A and A. Okay. All right. I think we're okay with an even realign there. Um, I don't think they have Middle East scoring, though. Uh, let's just take the three VPs here. Gambling that they don't have the Middle East scoring. Please run out of it. Otherwise that arms race was very terrible. <laughs> if they play Middle East scoring here, we could have just played Sadat and had three ops instead. Uh, Clean your regards to space. Okay. Uh, so will Sadat here, just to stop me stressing uh, and then we'll play probably space quagmire next just to keep ourselves open uh, and opec is actually a pretty good space for us next turn um, so it might be might be reasonably happy holding opec going into the late war i don't think it's too bad particularly since we can potentially draw north sea oil as well or they might give it to us Test ban. Okay. So we have to play Comic Con to take that back. So it's good keeping those three ops in hand for later, as well as not getting blockaded like we did last turn. Um, we can look at also taking some Mediterranean countries to try and shore up um, Europe here as well. So yeah, I mean, it, that's the thing, when they have um, Brezhnev in play, they get to be a lot more aggressive in terms of disrupting our board position. So expecting to get off three ARs in a row of events that don't impact the board was probably a little bit greedy, um, as well as getting a space off. So it looks like they've probably, they've got a lot of bad cards out of their hand, um, and a couple of good ones, like, you know, duck and cover, AR1 for the Soviets is good, and so is um, test ban both good cards but they've got rid of a lot of not great ones uh, so they could potentially have uh, a couple of good plays here towards the end of the turn which is going to be a bit awkward for us since we've got space and a two up to play I'm a little bit, I mean, the good thing about holding the China card is that we don't have to be as worried about the jams in Asia, like them jamming South Korea here is just so much worse when we have China. Uh, so, oh, they drew the <laughs> Camp David Accords, that's handy for us. Um, okay, so they are going for that Europe domination, that's annoying. Um, we get Camp David, which is good, can't get Arab Israeli ward anymore. Uh, so I think we'll just place the two here, put them three influence away from taking Turkey. 
and protect ourselves just in case they redraw salt negotiations and try and get brush war on Italy um, for some kind of disgusting Europe control victory. Um, De Gaulle is out, but Suez is still around, so we have to be aware of that. Um, yeah, so we have an AR7 space quagmire, which is pretty bad here. So if they break us, you know, relevant countries, it's actually super annoying because we don't really want to hold Quagmire at Obek over to next turn. Okay, they get to discard a scoring card. That's really annoying. Oh, Kitchen Debates. Okay. Kitchen Debates turned off. So do we give them four VPs here? Hmm. I don't think so. Um, but this might be worth more than four VPs. Yeah, I think we'll just give them OPEC and hold Quagmire over to space next turn. It's annoying. It's a good scoring card, but we save potentially two battleground countries, I think, by doing that. So I'm just going to lock that in. Like the alternative of going to space, yes, it gets us VPs, but I think that was that's an okay play there. Uh, so we still have the option here of Formosan 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we need to get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. One more country, so we just need to get Taiwan. Okay, so what are we going to do, though? Don't want to headline US Japan, I don't think. Um, that's going to space... That's getting rid of the reformer or Shea hmm. uh, or Fidel, and one of those are going to space, and one of them is being a hold card. So this is a bad, 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 bad hand for us. Um, so we've, our headlines basically consist of Shea. or Reagan bombs Libya, or US Japan Pact, and then AR1. Does that give us donation? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, yeah. So that gives us domination if we headline US Japan Pact. So maybe as awkward as that is, we just headline US Japan Pact and try and sandbag the victory points there. Because um, that'll take us up to eight, seven victory points from Asia. Hmm. I'm kind of leaning towards that, even though that leaves our, our hand being relatively ops light. I think we're just going to have to cop a bit of a beat this turn from a bad hand. Like, try and get away with that at the start of the turn to buffer ourselves against whatever they're going to throw at us. Which, if it's coup Algeria and get Africa control, is going to be pretty painful. But yeah, I think it's just too late for no route as well. And we just need those ops. Yeah, I'm having to just hold those ops for the hand. Uh, what are their targets on Shea? They can pump us in South America, which is annoying. Um, okay, so we can't affect that in the headline phase, so let's just do this. Yep. I don't think we can affect the headline phase. Nothing leaps out at me. And I think all in all, we're pretty happy with that region going even. Hmm. Okay. All right. Jam in South Korea with Soviets shoot down. That's interesting. So I think we'll just take back South Korea with no rad. We do want to hold the China card if we can, just for flexibility, and we're holding some pretty bad cards in hand. Uh, we're going to be ha having a bad hold card this turn. We might need to play the China card this turn but to, to hold on to Asia domination, but we'll see. Okay, 
Home space, success. Let's take those seven VPs and run. Free up the rest of our turn a little bit. Ah. <laughs> uh, just got even and then they've got Star Wars. All right, we'll go to space. Take the three VPs, nice. They are running themselves out of good Shea targets though. I mean, actually, I guess these South American countries are still relevant, it's pretty annoying. Flipping two countries in South America is such a pain. Um, so yeah, no benefit for us anymore from space, sadly, especially with Star Wars gone, sad face. Uh, at least we get to Aldrich Ames away this Fidel. Have to hold the Reformer and play Shea. So we've got Shea and Reagan's Bob's, Reagan Bob's Libya. Cut short there. Oh yeah, we can. oh yeah. Obviously, we can't. We have to. Uh, we have to play the reformer. Ooh, that's pretty bad. Um, or Fidel. Yuck. Uh, so I think we're gonna play the reformer here. Oh no! It looks like they've got Central America scoring. Uh, so we're going to place influence. Here. No, that doesn't give us. We're gonna have to coup here to give ourselves back our control. A coup with solidarity. Interesting. We're gonna trigger Shea. They're gonna get they're gonna coup Costa Rica maybe, but then they don't get the second coup if they fail, which is interesting. We're gonna go Uruguay first. Thankfully they just kicked us out. They didn't get it. And then Peru, okay. So we can go. Uh we have to coup again. Yeah. So coup Nicaragua. Do we get there? This is super interesting. Do they go the Hail Mary realigns? No, they're just jamming in. Okay. So they want to try and get some better rear lines on us, but they've only got one AR left. So, pretty, okay, they're just, they don't have the scoring card. They're just worried about us having it. So we need to be careful of that. All right, so we'll trigger the reformer. No, I don't think we do that. I think we play the China card. Place one, two, um, three, four, and then we just play Aldridge Ames and let them choose one of these for us to discard and we'll hold the other one to next turn. Yeah, so we're all, it's almost certain that they don't have the scoring card, but they think that we have the scoring card, or they're playing around us having the scoring card. Uh, okay, so I'm playing that for the event, interesting. They're just placing one in there. We will trigger Aldrich Ames. And then we'll place 
one in Mexico or yeah, I think I've placed one in Mexico, two in Venezuela. Um, yes, one in Mexico, two in Venezuela. Great. South America scoring will end the game. So, I think defectors can't get rid of that Africa scoring, but I think defectors is the way to go here to give ourselves the best chance. Because they can coup Venezuela, but it's, I mean, they might have a hunter. But I think they probably headline Hunter rather than AR want it, but I don't know. Um, so they could have Europe scoring, which would be annoying. Um, but again, do they headline it? It's intriguing. And if we don't win with this South America scoring, ah, this hand is a bloodbath for us. We're going to have to... Do we die to Lone Gunman? We have... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Then we get to hold it to the next turn. We wipe that next turn and we die to hand size reducers. Um, they don't have Aldrich Ames anymore. We're defectoring their headline. Hmm... But we are going to have to cop Fidel, which is less than ideal. Fidel and Africa scoring, obviously. Uh, but we're just going to dump the Africa scoring for six because we'd be devastating if it was for ten. Mm. So, so interesting. Thank goodness we had that defectors. Ooh. That is massive. So now it's like, do they coup South America? Do they repair Venezuela? I mean, yeah, if they have Junta here, I want it's like the not high for them. They have Glasnost coup with the two BPs, which is relevant, but not there. Um, so we just get to go South America scoring and win the game. <laughs> oh man, what a game. Um, that was epic. I was very nervous looking at that hand initially, and then I saw the South America scoring. Um, let's just say a GG to our opponent. Ah, uh, yeah, so we got very lucky um, in the early game. Uh, that Korean War missing on turn two was massive. Um, the ops disparity in the first couple of turns was pretty high towards us. Uh, they did have Marshall Plan, um, but we had both test ban and NATO on turn one, and then we got red scare on turn three. So, um, and did, who got US Japan in early war? Oh, they, did they UN intervention it? No, I feel like they UN interventioned something else. Hmm, I'm going to have to go back and look at that. But anyway, um, am I just missing US Japan here? Oh yeah, we had it. Yeah. So yeah, we had a, we had a pretty good run. We got four out of the five, uh, four ops in the early war. Um... They had to play Marshall Plan when it was not great. Uh, they did get us with that sweet blockade later, uh, but they also missed on a couple of coups early on. They missed on the, the first of the opening coup as well um, on Italy, though I think we were in decent shape for that, given, given we went with the setup with one in France. Um, but yeah, wow, what a ride. Uh, we managed to just draw, I think, a lot of scoring cards at relevant times. Like That's obviously another thing that's super important in Twilight Struggle is drawing the the access cards and the ops at the same time as you have the scoring cards. Uh, and I think we played pretty well around when we had scoring opportunities to maximize the victory points. Because yeah, I mean, it's not often that as the US, even if you've got a lead um, or as either side really, you're probably gonna have a weak region. And we definitely had, you know, a weak region in Africa for the whole game. Um, but the timing of the scoring cards meant that we were able to have that be one of the last regions scored the second time around. Uh, well, they only got scored once in the game. There were still some other open regions, I guess, um, this time around. Um, but yeah, it was only scored once. Our weakest region was only scored once. And 
some of the other regions like Central America when we're able to flip that from on turn four them having domination to then us having control the the time that it was scored that was a, a massive flip so yeah uh, thanks for watching uh, it's good to be back with some Twilight Struggle content and we will have some more games from this Otzel tournament as it goes on this was game one um, I think we've got another maybe nine or something games in the in the group stage and then getting yeah uh, getting a head start with a win is always good and hopefully there'll be some playoff action as well uh penny pode sorry you missed the game live but it will be up on youtube uh very shortly uh so you can catch the game there the full replay uh, or obviously you can watch the vod on twitch as well but um thanks for stopping by thanks everyone who's there in the chat thanks chipley thanks vance uh thanks penny pode and everyone else for dropping by and um we'll see you for the next game soon see ya